Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. In this tutorial I'd like to talk a little bit about cohesion. I'm going to open up my uh, web browser to my website javacjava.com and select begin. Scroll all the way down here to the cohesion tutorial. Now have you ever put a drop of oil into a glass of water? You will quickly notice that the two substances do not mix well. The oil wants to cling together floating on top of the water. That clingy bond that each different substance uh, has is termed as cohesion in the world of chemistry. Now in nature cohesion can be observed in flocks of birds, school of fish, and even those annoying gnat swarms. Cohesion can simply be described as the attraction that a group of similar objects share. Now in Java, cohesion is the relationship between members within a single class to perform a specific functionality. Simply put, do the members of the class belong together and do they work well to accomplish a single well-defined task? Now the cohesiveness of a class can be measured from highly cohesive to low cohesion. Let's first talk about low cohesion. A class that contains numerous methods that have nothing in common is an example of low cohesion. Considering the, consider the following class. This class is named Utilities, right, which is pretty generic. It might as well be like miscellaneous garbage, right? Um, and then there's a bunch of methods kind of just thrown in here. Display message, right, uh, file exists, capture input, uh, get class methods, right? And, you know, I'm not actually putting the code in here for this. This is more of learning a concept of cohesion there. So, uh, the class above contains a bunch of methods that have just been lazily thrown together. Now, this class is equivalent to the junk drawer that most people have in their kitchen. You know what I'm talking about, that drawer where you just throw everything that doesn't belong elsewhere. If you pull a spoon out of the dishwasher, do you put it in the silverware drawer or the junk drawer? Well, you put it in the silverware drawer, obviously. You know, the silverware drawer has high cohesion, whereas the junk drawer has low cohesion. Okay, let's talk about high cohesion now. The degree of cohesion increases as the functionality of the class becomes more specific. Consider the following class. Well, it's named Object Information. Okay, that seems pretty uh, focused, more specific as what its functionality is going to be. And then there's five methods in here, right? Get object class name where we can pass it in an object right and it'll return back a string of the object name get the object super class name get the object fields get the object constructors get the object methods all of these methods in the get in the object information class belong together right and together they serve a purpose to provide object information now the class above contains methods that serve a common purpose they all perform tasks directly related to object information Reiteration is good. Repeating myself is not bad. Now, a highly cohesive class is easy to maintain and can evolve and grow in a controlled manner. A class with low cohesion is hard to maintain and will grow in a haphazard random manner. Think about the junk drawer analogy for a second. Which drawer is easier to maintain? The junk drawer or the silverware drawer? Now, you should always strive to have a high level of cohesion, even if that means putting a single method inside of a single class. If nothing else, you will be able to locate the method much easier down the road if your project becomes a monster, right? So consider up here in the utilities class, we've got this display message uh, method there, right? Just put it, name your class something meaningful like messages, right? And then put it inside of there and just by itself. And what you might find is, you know, um, this might grow over time. You might end up, end up uh, more methods that actually have something to do with messages too as well. So, but just don't lump it and throw it all into the giant junk drawer, you know, like this class utilities here with a pretty useless name here and so on and so forth there. This is low cohesion. This is high cohesion. Okay, so um, this tutorial is mostly just to introduce you to the concept and the difference, uh, you know, between low cohesion, high cohesion, and, you know, everything in between right? Um, if you want to continue on with the tutorial, I've actually done up the high cohesion object information class down here and, and built on several things that I've talked about in previous tutorials, including like lambda expressions, the get class method from the object class, and so on and so forth there. It's kind of interesting there. Um, all, while, all while basically demonstrating, a, you know, a, a highly cohesive class. Um, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight the source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. 
All right, I'm gonna move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next, and finish. It's just that easy. If you're new to my tutorials, first thing you wanna do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash cd short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java using the um, md command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll create one for you. Okay, I'm going to create another folder here called um, object information, and I'm going to change directories to that object information uh, folder, and I'm going to notepad object or I'm having a hard time. I'm using my temporary keyboard because my other one died yesterday. I'm waiting to get in a, a brand new keyboard. So hopefully that'll get here today. Otherwise I'm going with my like $10 cheapy backup here. So it's driving me crazy. Okay, anyway, um, control V to copy or right click and select paste. Oh, save. Okay, so basically what we've got here is the object information class, and I've got all of these um, methods that I've filled it in there, and I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through, you know, list off some of the tutorials that you might want to, you might want to view if you're looking through this stuff and you're going, oh, okay, that's kind of cool there, right? Um, first and foremost, you might want to watch my get class tutorial and class class uh, method, common methods there, and when I say class class, I'm talking about there's an actual class in the... Uh, um, in the java.lang package there called class with an uppercase C and it has a whole bunch of methods that re, you know basically can um, return back various different things like for example get simple name here or get generic super class and then you could chain all these other methods together too as well um, and then get object fields uh, array list if you're not familiar with array list there um, I've got uh, several tutorials on array list and then inside of this uh, inside the diamond syntax there got strings and this is generics and I've got I think about three tutorials on generics on that right right off the bat there so um, and then of course this is an enhanced uh, for loop there and so basically um, this is all fairly fairly simple on that but just pointing in the right direction if you're looking at some of the syntax and going what on earth is that right so uh, let's come up here to the tester class and talk about the main method here simply declaring two uh, reference variables, i and s, and i will refer to a new instance of an integer object with the state of 41, and s will return, s will of course return, uh, refer to a new string object. Okay, and then I'm just simply creating an object information reference variable um, and assigning that to a reference to a new instance of object information. And displaying several things to the console there, i information, and then I'm invoking the get object class name and passing in i, which of course is our integer thing there, and then the super class name. And then after that, um, here's what might get interesting to you here, but um, if you recognize what this, if you recognize the syntax on that, that's all good and well. But basically, um, you notice the get object fields method right here returns back an array list um, object, right? That array list object, um, I've got, actually got an entire for each tutorial, uh, or a dedicated for each tutorial for the for each method up from the array list class, right? And um, the for each method, you have to pass in a lambda expression. I've got several lambda expression tutorials as well. So you might wanna watch those if you're looking at that going, wow, what on earth does, does that do? So. Anyway, but basically it's it's similar for the next three statements, you know, using the for each to iterate through an array list, right? And then passing in a Lambda expression to actually display the output to the console there. And then I do the same exact thing with the, the string S. So let's come up here and save this. Let's clear our screen. Um, let's go ahead and compile this. And of course we wanna run, uh, we wanna invoke the tester class, not the object information class, because the object information class doesn't have a main method entry point. Fairly simple on that. We're gonna see all this stuff scroll by and I'll come back up here, right? So right off the top, we've got, um, you know, 
uh, I information, the class name integer, the super class is number, right? Because integer is a, is a subclass of number. And then here's the listing of all the fields, right? Which is um, this for each iterating the lambda expression there. And so all the fields, here's all the constructors, um, and here's all of the methods there, right? And that's for the an integer type object, right? And um, here's for the string, right? The S information, it's, its class name is string, and it's a it's super class is object, right? Their super string doesn't inherits directly from object, has no other um, defined super class. Here's its fields, and here's the various different constructors for the string class. There's quite a few of them. And here's just the methods there, right? Um, the methods I, um, I use um, what's called the, uh, the get name invoking that off there, but if you want to see like a little bit more detail on them, you could uh, you could just basically do the two string method instead of the get name there. Um, I just did it because it, it's gonna really muck up like the, the view of this here, but you know, you'll get more information on it there, right? You can see now the methods, it'll define, define them there. Like for example, split, right? Split, you can pass in a string or you can pass in a string and an end. It shows you some of the overloaded versions of them there, right? Um, so. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to leave you with some final thoughts here, actually. So, uh, now that you know what cohesion is, you should always strive to name and design your class with a focused purpose. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.